Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress with a video on the king has gone completely nuts. And we see that happening in this position, which is a chess composition. It's not from a real game. It is a mate in three, white to play and checkmate the black king on the third move. It was composed by two composers who collaborated on this. Two Germans, Adolf Kramer and Erik Zeppler, and it got the first prize in the Neue Leipziger Zeitung in 1935. Let's have a look at the position. The position is crazy. White has more pieces. And the good news for white is that the black king has no flight squares. It's not in check, but it has no safe squares to go to. So all we need to do is check the black king, and then it will be checkmate. Looks simple enough, but it is not. We can try and play this knight away, and then the queen will give check to the king. But the problem for white is that his queen is attacked on h6. So once the knight moves away, then the black knight will take the white queen to deal with a check. Also black has two pawns only one square away from promotion. Will that play a role in the solution? But the good news for white is that the king on f2, even though it doesn't have many protectors around it, there is no check in the position for black. Well, the only check move would be if black promotes to a knight on h1 that would give a check to the king so what to do for white what is the first move if you want to look for yourself put a video on pause white's first move which we call the key move in chess compositions is very improbable in fact it looks completely crazy and when you look at it it seems extremely unlikely that this in fact leads to mate in three because the first move in this position and the only move to checkmate a black king on the third move is for white to play the king from f2 to e1. That is the solution of this composition. And the king has gone completely nuts. Why would you go to e1? What does the king have to do with the solution? And why go to the bottom rank? Why not go to another square if you want to play your king? Because you're now... In the firing line of a promotion on c1, a promotion on h1, and also two rook checks on the e-file. e1 would be the last square you would want to go to. But as I said, it is the only way for white to checkmate the black king on the third move. King f2 to e1 has to be played on the first move to achieve that goal. Quite incredible. Let's first look at white's threat. What is white threatening here? Let's make a very bad move for black. Let's play rook a to b8. It does not make any sense, but let's see how the black king then gets checkmated. White then can play knight g4 check, and we see one important point of the king moving to e1. The queen is now giving check to the king. That queen can be taken, and after knight takes h6, the white king is not in check by the rook. The king was on f2, knight takes a6 would be check, but because the king moved to e1, it's no longer check. And now it is checkmate on the third move with either rook d6, this is checkmate, or knight e5 also does the trick. So we've seen one point of king to e1 to get away from the f-file, so that after the black knight takes the white queen, the black king is not in check. Okay, it's good to know that. But of course, rook a to b8 on the first move was a ridiculous move. Black has four ways to give check to the white king on the bottom rank. This means that white will be in check and has to checkmate a black king in two moves from there, which seems very unlikely, right? Yes, it does. Well, let's see. We have these four checking options for black after the key move king F f2 to e1. There really is no other way for black to play. Let's see what happens if the c-pawn promotes either to a queen or to a rook. Well, that queen can be taken by the white queen. That's the second move. And now we need to checkmate the black king on the next move. If you promote with check on h1 now, then we have a very nice checkmate move. Do you see it? Yes, bishop g1. A discovered check on the black king and interposing the bishop so that the white king is no longer in check. This is checkmate. Beautiful. This is very nice checkmate. What if after queen takes c1 we do not promote our h-pawn but play another check, rook a to e8 check, or the other rook, which is the same thing. Do you see the checkmate now? Yes, bishop 
c5 to e3 is now checkmate. Again, the queen gives check to the king, and the bishop is shielding the check from the rook on e8. Bishop e7 would not work. It's almost the same thing. But then our b6 pawn will be unprotected. So bishop e3 is really the only move here. Very nice. Let's go back. We had played king e1, and we just saw that c1 promotion to a queen leads to checkmate on the third move. What about the other pawn? We can promote the other pawn to a queen with check. What is the solution then? We have to take that new queen, and if black promotes the c pawn now with check, then the solution is, yes, rook d1. The white queen again gives check to the king, and the white rook shields the check from the black queen. Very nice echo with the previous variation. What after queen takes h1, and then instead of promoting on c1, we give a check with one of the rooks? Well then, do you see it? Yes, rook e5 is checkmate. So in the first variation, the bishop did a trick. In the second variation, it is the rook who does the business. Very nice. So let's go back again. We had played king e1, that crazy move. And we had looked at both promotions from the pawns. And that doesn't save black, then white can checkmate the black king in the prescribed number of moves. But we still have the rook checks to look at. What if the rook on a8 gives check to the king? Then that rook will be taken with check. The queen gives check to the king. Yes, you can take that queen. But now there are two checkmate moves. Rook d6 is checkmate. But much more beautiful is the checkmate move. D8, knight. An under promotion. White has three knights on the board. And the black king is checkmated. Very nice. What if black does not take the queen on the second move. But interposes the rook. Well then we see that same under promotion. And in this case it is the only move that checkmates. D8, knight is the third move. And the black king is checkmated. Very nice. We have to look at one more variation. We played king e1. We have looked at both pawn promotions. We have looked at rook a to e8 check. And the last one we have to look at is rook f to e8 check, which is slightly different. That rook also get taken with check. Again, the queen gives check to the king. And we cannot interpose a rook, so we really have to take that queen. And then rook d6 is checkmate. Be careful, don't be fancy, don't promote to a knight instead, because that is not checkmate, because there is a rook on a8, which will take off the knight, and it will be black who wins this game of chess. So again, after rook fe8 check, knight takes, knight takes queen, rook d6 is the checkmate move. What a construction, what a composition. We've seen everything, a very unlikely, crazy looking key move, promotions, discover checks, and then on the promotion. Wonderful stuff. Many chess players don't have any interest in chess compositions, but if you don't enjoy this gem of a composition, you don't really enjoy chess very much. Kramer and Zeppler, 1935. I hope you enjoyed this composition as much as I did. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. Share it with your chess friends. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.